Have you ever had one of those times when you want to write, it's your scheduled time to write, but your brain is dead? <laughs> If that's happened to you, don't give up on your writing session. There are some ways you can save it. First thing to try is to turn on some tunes that will energize you or turn on some tunes that will get you into the scene you're trying to write. Either one of these can work. I'm a musician as well as a writer and I've done a lot of study on how music affects the brain. Have you ever had a time when you were like tired and kind of maybe down and then this song comes on the radio and before you know it you're dancing and feeling great? Music can do that for you. It works on the nervous system especially if it's music you like. Maybe you don't have a playlist for what scene you're working on in your book or maybe the scene you're wanting to write is kind of low energy but you need energy to write it's okay to just play an upbeat tune for like two minutes I mean most songs are what three minutes long play an upbeat tune and see if you then can go write that scene Second thing that really works when your brain dead is to tell yourself you will write for only five minutes. Any of us can do anything for five minutes. Even if you're about ready to keel over, you can write for five minutes. Say to yourself, okay, I know you're tired. I know you're not coming up with any ideas. We're just gonna write for five minutes. And you probably will be surprised when you go back the next day and look at that writing that is actually not too bad. And you can always edit it. It's always better to work with something on the page than to have a blank page, right? So give yourself just five minutes and see if that helps. The next tip I have that is really, 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 really important, both when you're feeling brain dead and at any time, really, is to give yourself permission to write badly. Blech. Blech. I've been writing for over 25 years and I still have to remind myself of this because there are days when I come to the blank page and I think I'm not up to speed, my brain isn't firing, I've been busy today, my mental energy is low, I'm not going to be able to produce the writing that I want to produce. This is a lie that our editing brains tell us. Ignore it. Write badly. It's okay to write badly. And a lot of us think, well, I don't want to waste the time writing badly. I would ask you, have you ever had a writing period that you felt was wasted? Most of the time, whatever we get down we will find nuggets of goodness in that the next day when we go back to edit. The other really good thing about writing anything at all even if it's something we think is not good is that it helps stoke that writing motivation. It helps encourage that writing habit. That is priceless because then the next day when we come back we're going to feel more like writing because hey we got something there to work with. So give yourself permission to write badly. Nobody's going to see it until you're ready for them to see it. Just write. It's okay if it's horrible. Next tip I have for you, if you're trying to write when your brain did, is to write a scene that stokes your emotions. Maybe the next scene you have to write is like an intro into a chapter and you've got to pull the reader into it and the first thing you need is to set up the setting and set up where they are and kind of do some catch up from where you were before or whatever. When you're facing that kind of thing at the beginning of a chapter or at the beginning of a story or at the beginning of a blog post or whatever it is that you're writing, that can create more resistance for us and seems to be a harder hurdle to overcome, especially when we're feeling brain dead. So forget that. Just jump into the heart of the story that has more emotional power for you. Maybe in this chapter you know that you're going to have two characters confronting one another and you're excited about what's going to happen there. Jump to that part of the scene. You can always fill in the beginning stuff later. Or maybe this is a blog post and you're passionate about the topic. Jump right into talking about the part you're passionate about. You can put the intro in later. It really works well and helps you get the thing done faster than you would normally and it also helps you overcome that hurdle that you might feel when you're feeling brain dead. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 For my next tip, I'm going to ask you to use this with caution. We often turn to food when we're brain dead, right? If we have to keep working, we know we want to get something done, we know we don't want to waste this writing time, we will turn to food. The problem is that most of us writers will turn to unhealthy stuff to get us going because when your brain is tired, it craves unhealthy stuff. We've seen this biologically. You're going to want sugar, you want salt, you're going to want fat. So the danger here, if you just did this one time, a sugary soda, or you get a bag of chips or whatever it is your weakness is. Doing that just one time isn't going to hurt you. The problem is that we are such habitual creatures. It is really easy for this to turn into a habit. Eat that bag of chips this time. Before you know it, you're reaching for that bag of chips every time you sit down to write. One of my weaknesses, I have to tell you, is donuts. My great uncle was from Quebec and they have wonderful pastries there, of course. So he used to go to the store every morning and get donuts and he would bring them back. And whenever I visited him, I would so look forward to these donuts. So 
I think he passed that weakness along to me because, oh man, donuts I'm like a huge fan of. But I know how fattening they are and I know that they're so not good for you. And especially, you know, the older we get, the more this stuff shows up on us if we even have just one. So there was a time when I was like, okay, I'm just going to treat myself a little bit. I'm just going to have a donut in the morning. Before long, I had to have a donut every morning after breakfast. I was like, okay, this is not good. I had to break that habit. Be careful of this tip. But the tip is food can be helpful. It's better if you choose something healthy. Anything that is good for your heart is good for your brain. So a handful of nuts is really great. A hard boiled egg, a little a cup of Greek or regular yogurt, a few strawberries or blueberries with maybe a little bit of whipped cream. Anything like that is really good. Coffee, tea, sparkling water. Treat yourself a little bit and that'll help get your brain going, give you some energy so that you can then write. If you succumb to having a cookie or something like that, if that is your vice, I'm not telling you to avoid it, but then maybe really watch your serving size. Take out one cookie and take it to your writing desk. Don't bring the whole package of cookies, same with chips or anything else. Just try to keep your health in mind, but it's okay to use food or beverages to get your brain going if that works for you. Next tip I have for you, if you're feeling brain dead, is to simply write about how you feel. It's amazing how effective this can be. So you're sitting there and you got this new chapter you want to write and your brain is not responding. So just write, you know what, my brain is dead today. I really don't want to write this chapter because I'm just feeling really tired. I want to do this chapter, you're typing all this out, because you know I wanted to get this done and I have a deadline to have the novel done by such and such a month. I'm sitting here because I know that it's right to do, but I don't really feel like it. But actually if I think about this chapter, I'm kind of excited about Bob because he's supposed to be proposing posing to carry today and that would be kind of a fun scene to write and you gradually take yourself from where you feel into the story. Don't worry you can delete all that other stuff later. Start talking to yourself about this scene you want to write until you're in it and you're writing and away you go. Next tip I want to give you is to again tap into your body's nervous system by moving. It can really help to take just a short five minute walk, go outside and see the dog for three minutes. If you can't do that, then try just standing up and doing a few stretches. Do that for a few minutes. Anything you can do that kind of boosts the circulation, gets the blood to your brain, can help you to overcome that initial brain fog feeling. Next tip I have for you is to read something that inspires you. One of the practices I do that helps me get into writing when I don't really feel like it is to read from some of the authors I really admire. It's important to give yourself a limit because if you start getting into the story, then you're not going to want to give it up and you're not going to go back to writing. So I give myself a limit of one page. Or if I'm reading poetry, which is also really a good way to inspire yourself, that I'll read one short poem or one page if it's a longer poem. I don't know if you're like me, but every time I read something from a really good author, I think, oh man, I want to try that. I want to see if I can write that well. And that gets me going on going back to the page. Have some books by your writing nook that you can regularly grab and just read a little bit from. Sometimes all it takes is a couple of paragraphs and you're off and running. Okay, the next tip I have for you is to lower your expectations. This is kind of similar to writing badly, but it has a little bit of a different feeling about it, so I wanted to add it in here. Often we have really high expectations for what we want to accomplish in our writing period, but sometimes if you're coming to it and you're not firing on all cylinders, maybe your life has been difficult lately, or you just don't have the energy because you haven't been sleeping well, you got to lower your expectations. you got to say, okay, I had planned to write a thousand words today. I'm going to try to just write 250. Bring those expectations down. Make what you're wanting to do with your writing session easier. Imagine that your brain is a tired muscle. If we really overwork a muscle, like you've done 20 push-ups yesterday, you're probably not going to want to do 20 push-ups today because your muscles need time to recuperate. But you probably could do five push-ups, right? So you try to bring your expectations down and give your brain that feeling of, you know, this is not going to be hard. We can do this. I don't expect you to be awesome today. Just get a few words down on the page and I'll be happy. Lower your expectations and that could help you get over that hump. Why, 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 why? And the last piece of advice I have for you, if you're trying to write in your brain dead, is to think about why are you brain dead. Now, if this happens only once in a while, it's no big deal. But if it's happening quite a bit and it's affecting your writing period fairly often, then I would try to figure out what's going on because this isn't how you want to function on a normal basis. Think about what you're eating. Think about how you're sleeping. Thinking about how much you're moving every day. For writers, that is really key. We can really get into the trap of spending a lot of time at the computer. We love writing so much. We're doing all these things. 
things we need to do for our careers and we're just not getting up and moving enough throughout the day, that can really tank your energy, both physical energy and mental energy. So ask yourself those three things. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? And are you moving? If you're having trouble with any of those, if you can address some of those, typically that will help you address the brain fog as well. The last thing you want to think about is are you overly stressed about something? Is stress really hitting you hard and has it been hitting you hard for a while? If that's the case, then probably anything you can do to relieve that stress will help you. Often the answer is to cut back on how many activities you're doing, give yourself time to rest and recover and recoup if you can do that. But it is important to figure out why am I feeling this way? Why is this happening? One more thing that may be happening is that you're scheduling your writing time at a time when you're typically tired in the day. Is it possible for me to write at a time when I have more mental energy? That's why writing first thing in the morning can be really helpful for a lot of writers. Maybe you only have 15 minutes in the morning, but you may be able to get more done in that 15 minutes than you could in 45 minutes at the end of the day because you have more mental energy. So consider maybe that you need to change your schedule up. If you're still struggling with times when you just don't feel like writing and you still want to get some writing done, be sure to check out my video about how to write when you don't feel like writing, how to overcome that feeling. And meanwhile, if you've had times when you were brain dead and you found a tactic that worked to get you into the writing, please share that with us in the comments. See you next time.